Alrighty guys and welcome back to a game where I'm going to be actually queuing as a solo queue survivor. That being said, there are going to be no teammates that are in a pre-made. I'm pretty sure we all join separately. Now we can see we got a, Je a, a Jeff, a Jake. We can see we got a Jake going towards the generator downstairs. I'm going to run through the middle of the board. I'm going to try and apply pressure to something else. We see another Jake behind me to the right hand side. I have no other information of where anybody else is, but I am going through the center, which is good. And I cannot hear a heartbeat. I cannot see anything. What else I've, have I noticed is that nobody in my game is an obsession. Therefore, nobody is currently running running decisive strike. Now that is both a beauty and a curse because that means I know the killer doesn't have anything like save the best for last. But at the same time, I don't know what the killer is. I'm looking around based on the fact that I went through the middle of the board and I heard no heartbeat. I'm thinking I might be versing a ghost face or a stealth based killer, which would put me in a really awkward situation. Now right away, we've got the generator just shy of one fourth of the way done. It's going to take 80 seconds for me to complete it. Still don't know where the killer is. Smaller heartbeat is what I'm guessing now. I'm not thinking a trapper. It's taking too long to prep. I'm thinking a hag. I'm thinking a hag or a ghost face. Somebody has been injured. If the killer is not AFK and the killer is going to be doing something. That's good. Getting this generator done is going to force poorer pathing by the killer. There'll be a generator upstairs that needs to be completed. I will not complete that. I will save that for the late game because it's a very strong loop up there. I'm going to get this one done in the middle. And then I'm going to do the one downstairs in the house over there. And try and keep that really strong jungle gym available. And hopefully trick the killer into opening the side doors to make it an even stronger loop. I'm going to let go to see if the killer has Ruin. Doesn't look like the killer is running Ruin. I think if the killer had Tinker, they'd be on me already. I can see an injured player on my right-hand side. He's running with a med kit. I can actually see where that generator was done. There's our ghost face that we were talking about. Now, will he chase me or will he regress the gen? That was bad movement by me, but I can still make this window. I wouldn't have made it. I was wrong. That's okay. I do have Iron Will. I doubt he'll cut me off here. He has to regress the generator before he makes a decision. I think he'll come straight back and check on that. Oh, he's found somebody. That's good. That gives me time to finish this. And I can make that pallet with Deadheart if I need to. Generator's done. He'll come back over and see who completed it. See if we can make the corner. He activated his ability. I don't know where he is. We're going to play it safe. I'm going to go up. Or around the back. All the way around. We're going to walk here. We're going to listen to see if we can hear his cape. Can't hear it. Oh, we got the bad generator spawn where he can get a good jump on me. No, we don't. It's a gen downstairs. Gen's downstairs. This is not good for me. I have to react really well. I'm going to be holding shift and my finger's going to be an E. If he comes from the back, that's the best play. If he comes from the front, that's a bad play for me. He's lost four generators already. This is a solo queue game, like I specified earlier. I didn't play a map offering for this. I don't think anyone did. I just gotta be mindful that he could be coming from any direction and ready to respond like that. He's gonna accidentally sandbag me, so I'm gonna take a heal from him. I do have adrenaline and normally I wouldn't look to heal, but based on his current location, I'm not gonna be able to get past him effectively. If Ghostface comes from behind now, I'm pretty much down, there's no play. His best play would be to open this. So normally we would wait for the adrenaline play, but it's not worth going down this late into the game. I'm still going to try and respond appropriately. Alright, we're not sure where the killer is. We know he didn't have any ruin. He didn't pop through the weasel any of the generators we were on. He didn't have surge. We, we haven't seen him down anyone. It's going to be a really hard game for Ghostface. Unfortunately, he didn't have Corrupt. This should be one of the showcases to you guys of why it's so important to have Corrupt Intervention or Ruin. Something along those lines, right? Having Corrupt means they couldn't have worked on those gens downstairs at the start of the trial. And it looks like our ghost face has given up. He just waited in front of an exit gate. No player could have opened a door that quick. So that just should be a prime example for you that Corrupt funnels survivors together. So sometimes Corrupt and Discordance is a great combo. For example, on a Plague, or you can have really hard games like this. Now, I barely saw the killer. I did make a boo-boo with my loop. I took an M1 for it. He tried to chase somebody else. I completed the generator under his nose because I knew I could run and dead hard to another pallet in time that he could have actually bloodlusted me at. Or if he was really good with his mind games, he could have got a hit on me as well. Anyways, guys, GG's well played. If you're watching this educational informative rank one solo queue survivor game, not all solo queue games go like this, but it just goes to show you the importance of corrupt intervention or ruin or tinker or knowing where survivors are, thrilling tremor if you catch them, etc. Anyways, guys, GG's well played, and I'll see you beautiful people in the fog in the next video. Have a good one.